Hello, it's Boy Power. My name's Matt. Um, today we uh, are going to cover how to measure squish bands. Um, I know I just did a video on what they are and where they are and how they're important and how they work. And today we are going to actually measure one. Um, so this is a Hyper 2 Piaggio 50cc engine. Actually, it's a 70 kit. I'm talking absolute rubbish. <laughs> it's um, 70 cc kit and uh, I'm going to show you two methods um, one not entirely that well <laughs> and I'll, I'll explain why and the other I'll show you how I usually do it so um, we'll take the head off and then uh, we'll get cracking now as I was just taking these um, head nuts off I had a look at them and uh, these are the old ones not replacement new ones but if you can see that Camera, come on, do your job. See how they're starting to round off slightly. You can see these indentations. They're getting quite nicely polished, especially that one. Get the camera to focus on it. Um, yeah, if they look like that, replace them. Even if you can get them back on, it's just going to cause you problems if these things look like they're, they're going south. Then just get them replaced. Oh bloody washer. Right then. So with this head, it's quite obvious where the squish band is. It is this outer edge here. Now you might think, oh, well I need to measure my squish band, I'll just measure that. Um, but that doesn't show you what your squish band is. Uh, that's the depth in the head, not how high the piston comes up. And if you uh, crank your engine Keep your head in the same, but keep your cylinder in the same place. If you look there, when the pistons at uh, TDC, you can see if I can get this bloody tripod to work properly. You can see at TDC that we're not exactly flush with the top surface. So measuring in there, measuring. Oh, bloody hell, here we go. Measuring just in here isn't giving you an accurate reading. So people say, "Oh, yeah, well, there's there's there's, there's usually there's two generally used methods um, for doing this, and uh, one is uh, the solar wire measurement, um, which I don't like using. I don't like sticking solder down your spark plug hole." and trying to measure your squish because you don't precisely know if you've got it right um, it's, you, you can get it right, I'm not saying you can't but um, you've got to piss around with certain thicknesses of solder etc etc you need solder at least a millimetre or bigger to be able to measure the gap you're not entirely sure where it is and what you're doing etc etc there is no danger of scratching anything because solder is extremely soft as you probably know you can wing it around snap it do what you want with your hands the way I prefer to do it is a, a direct measurement um, and that is the measurement I'm going to show you and then I'll give you a quick gist I don't have solder thick enough I don't think I think I have some lead um, which you can also use um, but I'll show you the method that I use and people, the method that I use means that you have to take your cylinder head off like this and people go, oh no, you can do it so much easier, you don't have to take your cylinder cap off. If your squish band is not in the range that it needs to be, you have to take all this off and change your base gasket anyway. The other thing is as well is that, um, you know, people say, oh, you know, you have to do this. What happens if it's right? Well, if it's right, and it's right because nothing's changed, you know, you've set it up to be 0 0.7, just say, 0 0.7 millimetres. You've done it all, you want to check six months later. If you've been tightening down your head studs, uh, you know, periodically talking your head studs, then you should be fine. There shouldn't really be any reason for it to massively grow. Um, you might be a tiny bit out, but then is that bother, are you going to bother stripping the whole thing? So you're going to either change it or not change it if it's an engine that you've never had before you know you bought a new bike and you want to know what it is because you think it's not producing enough power etc etc it's not a bad idea taking the head off and seeing the state of the piston rings um, the head if there's any debris in here and so on and so forth so 
using that as an excuse, oh well you don't have to take your head off and all this, yeah you don't, but it's not a bad thing as far as I can tell, you know, taking it off, having a look, what's the harm in that? Um, so, without me wittering on like a little girl for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to crack on and show you how to do um, my method of how I do um, squish movements. Right, then, so what you'll need to do this is a um, top wrench and a six point, I know I keep on banging on about this, but if you do not want to round them off, use a six point, not a twelve point. It's something that pe a lot of people don't think of and don't bother checking and then they just end up rounding stuff off, getting them stuck and then wondering why. Oh my god, I've got this stuck. Um, that's how you avoid doing that. Uh, get your cylinder head and what you need is some modelling clay, like this. I have this stuff everywhere. Um, modelling clay, blue tack, plasticine, whatever you want, just as long as it's squishy and malleable and you can warm it up your fingers. Um, so you get some oil, um, I've just got some plus gas, some kind of lubrication. A tiny bit on your uh, on your head, rub a bit off your head, rub it on your piston where you're going to do it, you check. Line up the two with each other so you know where you've sprayed your oil. And then basically all you're going to do is you're just going to press your modelling clay into where your squish pan lives, making sure it's proud, otherwise you're not really going to get a measurement. Then you slap your head back on. Now you need to know you need to know your rotation um, because you don't want this to be the oils to stop um, the modelling clay sticking to stuff. But you want to know your rotation, and in this case it's um, clockwise from where I'm sat. Um, so just so you can go to top dead centre and then back out again. If you keep on going around too much, you might suck some of the blue tack in and it'll go in your pores and you'll be picking out for the rest of your life. So now you've done that, um, I always use washers on heads if I can fit them in. It makes sense. Why not? A lot of these kits don't supply which I think is a bit crazy. Um, Yes, they are flared and all the rest of it, the nuts, most of the time. But I put the washers on regardless. You need a torque wrench because you need to torque your head down properly. You don't need your spark plug in um, or anything like that. So what I'll do is I'll torque this up. Right, and we'll so I'll get your torque wrench out. And you want to do them opposites. Just a bit. You don't have to go all into the click until you get there. the cylinder, there we go, just about 90 degrees, and then undo it again, which is a lot of fun, and where's that six point gone, now you shouldn't have felt much resistance because it's modelling clear. Thing. And with any luck, 
the bloody washers. And as you can see, it has squashed it nicely. So what we need to do now is kind of get it out without disturbing it. So you get an edge and uh, like I said because we haven't because we've applied oil to it it shouldn't really stick. And I don't know if you can see this that well. But there, the cross section, we have got the squish band and then the rest of the combustion chamber. And if you measure that with your guestometers or your um, micrometer, um, get the mic out. Now, to be very delicate here because obviously you can squish it. So a squish band there is reading what's that? That's one mil, one point six mil. Now I haven't set up the squish on this, obviously, because one point six mil is absolutely massive. But um, you could even get your scale and just put it against it. Yeah, same thing there. One and a half, just over one and a half. Um, so yeah, so what has to happen here now is that we either get a really thin base gasket, or we pretty much just get rid of the base gasket. The piston will stay where it is as the cylinder drops down. The head is attached to the cylinder, so the head comes closer to the piston, and um, and that's how you measure a squish with the. Uh, the modelling clay slash blue tack method. Make sure you clean. There's a bit of scum and residue and all the rest of it on there. Um, but make sure you clean all that rubbish off, like so, and uh, you're ready to rock and roll. The adjustment for how big your squish or how much you should take out your squish. So we've got 1.6 mil. Um, and the gasket's probably, I don't know, a mil, so we can take that out, that'll drop it to 0.6. So we may have to stick a gasket in there, a base gasket, um, but we'll see how we go. And the, um, I'll just quickly show you the um, soldering iron, uh, soldering iron, solder technique that most people kind of fancy. I'm not going to bolt the head down or anything. But uh, basically they get thicker than this, like I say, I'm, I can't show you, cause, but they get some solder and you just create a slight hook in it and you stuff it down the inside of your spark plug and then try and touch the inside of your cylinder wall, torque it all down and then rotate the same thing and then you get some calipers and measure the thickness of your solder. But you must remember that your solder must be thicker than the gasket that you are aiming for, uh, the, the squish thickness you are aiming for, uh, otherwise it's, it's just going to go nowhere. It's not going to touch it so you're not going to get an impression, you're not going to get a flat spot. Copper wire, you can also use really thick copper wire, um, not the braided stuff, I mean like solid earth copper wire. Um, it's best to use solder just because it's a hell of a lot softer. Uh, copper's quite hard, but I have used copper before, especially in uh, cast iron heads and stuff like that. Um, this uh, clay method is basically the same thing you do for valve clearances in four strokes um, so you can see the interference or the, the gap between your piston when it comes to TDC and your valve clearance when your valves are open and closing. Um, but like I said that's my preferred method it gives you a, a much uh, a much it gives you a, a clearer uh, an obviously clear uh, measurement because it's just not on catching something right. Um, you get to see a broad cross section um, of your combustion chamber. It's also another way that you can actually measure combustion chambers if you've got enough soft 
gooey stuff like blue tack you can actually fill a combustion chamber with it uh, put a bolt in your spark plug hole and then or leave your spark plug hole at, exposed uh, wing it around a couple of times so your piston squishes it you'll see some of it come out of your spark plug hole and you open it up you get it you cut it off and then you plop the blue tack into water and see how much volume it displaces in millilitres and you can work out the uh, air of your combustion chamber pretty much um, quite accurately. Right, so that's that for now and uh, see you in a bit.